Thanks for checking out this film review from the Dead Man's Party podcast. You can find our full archive of every unedited show if you subscribe to The Skeleton Crew on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Be sure to support Dead Man's Party on Patreon. Link in the description. Enjoy the review. What's up, everybody? This is Dead Man's Party. We are reviewing Back to School 1986. I had to lift my head up for this. I was just snorkeling with three babes in a hot tub. My name is Al. (laughs) And it is September 9th, so all you mofos should be back in school by now. Especially these two dropouts. (laughs) And I am here with Chris, as always. What's up, Chris? How are you? Uh, My hair is blue and red on the sides, and I am ready to go. I'm, I'm dry humping the floor or something, I don't know. And we are here with a special guest for this one. It is Nudie Neal. What's up, brother? Hey, man. Good to be here. It's uh, definitely been a while, so it's good to hear your sexy voice again. Ah, you too, man. God, it's like old times. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> so right now we're doing Back to School 1986. Director Alan Metter, writer Stephen Campman, William Porter, P.J. Trevecki. Starring Rodney Dangerfield, Sally Kellerman, Burt Young, Keith Gordon, Robert Downey Jr., Paxton Whitehead, Terry Farrell, Emmett Walsh, Adrian Barbeau, William Zapka. Now, normally I don't go through all these names, but man, there are so I was going to say, who did the catering? Yeah, right. <laughs> There's so many, though. Sam Kennison. Robert Picardo, I think. Uh, Kurt Vonnegut <laughs> is oddly enough in here. So, uh, yeah, this is... Is this not like a quintessential 80s capturing that college vibe, the 80s comedy, 100% or what? Oh, dude, absolutely. Like, when this ca- this came out when I was 10 years old, and I think I was 11 or 12 the first time I saw it, but it just bore itself into my brain from that initial watch and before this the i was only familiar with rodney dangerfield from caddyshack which i had seen a hundred times probably by the time this movie came out but that that's all i knew him from and he's not i'm clearly not the you know not the main guy in that movie so this was the first movie i ever saw him in where he was like the driving force you know in the movie and he absolutely knocks it out of the park oh yeah yeah, I would say this is his his biggest like biggest showcase of a movie. How about you, Neil? What do you think? Oh yeah, this is the period where he was on fire. He had all those comedy specials on HBO all the time. He did Easy Money with with Pesci, which was hilarious as well. So many things going for him at this time, and this was like you said, the perfect and a fish out of water going back to school at 50, 60 years old, however old he was. Pretty amazing shit. Uh, I, th- I think I looked it up. He was 65. Isn't that nuts? He became yep. a movie star at 65 years old. Yep. That, that shit does not happen. Well, the sad story about him is that he was never like insanely happy in life, and I think it's obviously because he, he got famous way too late. Uh, yeah. You know, we all love him for being the old man who's funny and stuff but of course he would have liked to have been famous at 25 uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't work out in that sense but hey he had this shining moment um, which we all really love and appreciate so uh, <clears throat> yeah this this movie I saw it about probably 20 years ago and it just stuck out to me uh, it, it's obvious that he uh, in, and in the writing of this movie, it was said that he added 50 jokes to this movie in like two or three days of like sitting down with the writing team. And that's obvious, right? I mean, it's all his type of jokes. So I either read somewhere or I heard something in an interview years ago that his whole spiel in that opening commercial where he says, are you a large person, pleasantly plump, you know, a little on the hefty side? Are you fat? When you go jogging, do you leave potholes? All that was co- <laughs> all that was cobbled together from jokes of his from the past, and they just put it all together and made that um, commercial based on his comedy. Right. 
And as horror fans, we're also, uh, we all recognize one kid in this movie, huh? Yep. Jaws 2, Christine. <laughs> Jaws 2. To, to, to name a couple. <laughs> Chris, Christine is in my top 10 horror movies of all time. I love Keith Gordon. Yeah. So to see him in this movie, that was always cool. Uh, any Karate Kid fan is thrilled to see William Zabka be an asshole again. God. But oddly enough, he doesn't beat up Melon. No, he's... he's it's, he, it's different than Johnny Lawrence. Like, it, Johnny Lawrence is just like a bully and a prick. Whereas this movie, he's not... It's I don't know how to say it. He's just kind of just slimy and smarmy and just arrogant. Same 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 stratosphere, but it's just kind of different. But he's great. And did did you ever see just one of the guys from 1980? Mm. Okay, he's great in that too. He plays God. the same fucking character in those movies, man. <laughs> yeah, he he just cannot be a good guy. It just it doesn't the aura doesn't come off him. I guess he's Until a good Cobra guy now. Died. Yeah, yeah, now he is. Yeah, how weird is that? Now he is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's still in the 80s, too. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, but his hair in this movie is wow. I oh, mean, shit. <laughs> My God. So uh, there's a lot of elements in this movie, believe it or not. It seems like some dumb straight-up comedy, but you got the son who's in college, and he's lying to his dad about being on the swim team. He's lying about being in a fraternity. He tries to avoid seeing his dad. The dad's new wife is showing everyone her clamp. Oh, <laughs> dude, Adrian Barbeau. She is one of my all time 80s <laughs> crushes, man. Yeah. Can C- Cannonball Run, Creep Show, Swamp Thing, The Fog, this movie. I was in love with that woman when I was a kid. Wow. Yes, absolutely. Do you think she's hot, Neil? She's OK. Like, I wouldn't say no. I, mean, I don't know. I've, even I, today, she looks pretty good for her age. For her age, she yeah. looks great, man. I've always been into older chicks, and she's just always done it for me, man. I mean, she's not my number one choice, but I mean, I she, say no. She's not your J Lo. <laughs> no, not my J Lo. No. In the eighties, my J Lo was Ginger Lynn. <laughs> I, love ah! I love that woman. Now, she, now she doesn't look so great. But Ginger Lynn, yeah, she's good looking God, a little rough. She was the hottest thing ever in the eighties. Wow. You know who else is really hot? Uncle Paulie, who's in this movie. <laughs> rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace, dude. Yeah, he was... It really is Pauly. Pa- it's Pauly in this movie. He's just yeah. a chauffeur slash bodyguard in this movie. <laughs> and at this point, he thought his Rocky claim to fame was over with, because Rocky Four was already done. Yep. And that took five years to do Rocky Five, so he, he probably figured it was all over with. But we're not going to keep doing Rockies. And it was funny. He's he's very, um the way he looks in this movie, he's very disheveled and dirty looking, right? His face has a lot of like, um, I haven't shaved in a week look. He always kind of looks like that, though. Even in The Sopranos, and he showed up in that for one season, he kind of looked like that, too. I think that's his just signature. <laughs> Yeah, just dirt bag. Is it <laughs> just like, be a dirty guy. <laughs> but he's always dressed nice in a weird way, right? Like, even in the Rocky movies, he always has those weird suits on, but it's like dirt bag suits. And then even yeah. in this movie, he's like a chauffeur, so he has to look nice again. <laughs> it's a weird thing. <laughs> <Right. laughs> what do you guys think of, like, the weird comedy in these movies? Like, when, when Rodney Dangerfield starts making that sandwich at the party at his house, and, like, oh. it's such a movie moment where, like, everybody gathers around to look like it's so amazing what he's doing. Like, who would care about that, right? <laughs> Every time I watch this movie, it makes me so fucking hungry. Even yeah. though it looks disgusting, kind of. It kind of does, yeah. It, I, last night, I was really trying to decipher what he's putting in that thing after he scoops the bread out. He puts in meatballs. And then the second thing I can't tell, and then he puts in deviled eggs as the third, <laughs> which, which devil, you can't get much more disgusting to me than deviled eggs. But eggs. somehow, when he puts all that shit together and cuts that thing in half, I just want to devour it every time <laughs> I watch this movie. <laughs> then he walks in on his wife awkwardly doing something with a guy on a countertop. And then she says, you're impossible, because he, he caught her. Then she has the balls to introduce him to some more guests. And you're like, wait a minute, what is happening here? You just got caught cheating on your husband, and you're saying, I'd like you to meet the, the Thorn Fellows, or something. Like, like, what in the hell is going on here? <laughs> it's the same character from Creepshow. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. 
<laughs> and then, then he, the, what's weird about it is it's a weird thing because you think it's a shocking moment when he caught her fooling around with this guy. Then later on, she complains to him about his behavior, and then he pulls out Polaroids of her doing this for a while now. Right. So why was he ever putting up with any of that? You know, it's a, it's a weird thing to ask of a comedy movie to try to make sense or get character um, arcs or like whatever you want to say. Like, but why is he with her? Why is he still okay with everything if he already had these on hand? <laughs> Maybe they had a some kind of weird clause in their marriage or something. I don't know. I don't know. He was just waiting for her to try to sue him so she, he could say, fuck you, I got you. Yeah. So anyway, he's he's splitting from her. That's how he decides to head to his son's college, uh, surprise him, even though he said, don't come here. Uh, he's surprising him anyway. He goes there, and how about... And this is another thing that we're going to talk about every time we do 80s movies, probably, because it's so... It's gone from the landscape of movies these days, for the most part, especially comedies or horror uh, you get to this great nude scene where he goes into this Greek house. He just picks oh. <laughs> any of them. It's dude, that chick is so hot. <laughs> and he's sixty-five years old, dude. Yeah. Can you imagine? And then he pulls back the curtain again to say, "You're perfect. You're perfect." <laughs> you couldn't just yell that <laughs> over the curtain, <laughs> like, "Oh my god!" Just amazing, <laughs> man. I love that stuff. <clears throat> And how about Robert Downey Jr. in this movie? Yeah, he was an up and comer with the with the gap teeth. This was the first movie I ever saw him in. Because even though Weird Science came out before this, I saw Back to School first, so I didn't know who Robert Downey Jr. was when I saw this movie. But he's great. Yeah, he was my second favorite actor in the '90s into the 2000s. He was at my height. I was into him like around 2000, 2001. So <clears throat> it was weird when he became like insanely famous with Iron Man I was down for that and then after I realized how big he got I kind of like <laughs> felt like he was no longer mine or something like that so I was like eh and I just lost interest in him as a yeah actor. I mean that's like being in this, some you know underground metal band that you love and then they blow up and everyone loves them and you're like ah eh, fuck that they're, they're too popular now yeah that's how I kind of felt with him but so during these days I was like totally into anything he was doing what standout scenes of this movie? Like, what makes this these this movie great? Would you say? Do you think it's like all of um, Ronnie Dangerfield's like <laughs> one-liners that are just plopped throughout this entire movie? Do you think it's the chemistry of the cast? Do you think it's the the college atmosphere? Like, what really grabs it? I was as you were asking that question, I was going to say it's Rodney Dangerfield's dialogue. Almost everything he says in this movie is fucking hysterical, but. I mean, it's it's everything you just listed. Everyone in this movie is great. They're acting, the the setting, the atmosphere. It's it's all great, but it's seventy five percent of it is just Rodney's performance. He kills it, dude. Yep, he uh, made this is his his showcase, his showpiece. But he gets along with everybody in the movie, even the him and that his the evil professor that he fights with throughout the whole movie. Like, oh, that guy! That guy's even them too. Yeah, that their scenes together cast. are just incredible, and I love that the guy, he's just like the stuffy British guy, he even drives a British-looking car, like, <laughs> wears a stupid Sherlock Holmes hat, it's like, you know, it's <laughs> like, it's just perfect, the whole thing is just perfectly, you know, it's, it's one of the perfect comedies of the 80s. Yeah, even that guy was perfectly cast. Yep. Oh, for sure. You know, I love when he throws the dirt on top of him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's a, that guy is a he's a pushover though. Like your girl comes home in a car with another man, a guy you hate, and you, he, she just canceled dinner with you, and you are for some reason stalking her outside her house when she finally gets home, stumbles on in in the middle of the night with another man, and you're just you're hanging out with her. When she's uh, at the bleachers watching a diving competition, a couple scenes later, like, what? Like, is this the, guy a- the original cuck? Yeah, he's a cuck. Yeah, yeah she cuck. she shows up. He Rodney drops her off, and that guy's just like, I don't believe this. That's it. That's it. I mean, right. is that all you would do? I don't believe this. Right. <laughs> he's totally okay with that. I fucking wipe her face on the floor. Oh. 
So, speaking of J-Lo's and hot chicks and all that, what do you think about their hot chick of this movie, the quintessential Valerie Desmond? Mm, um, like, she's cute, but I think they could could have gone with someone a little more attractive and I don't I don't mean to sound like an asshole for saying that but maybe they were just going for someone a little bit more relatable like because Keith Gordon you know is a short kind of you know dweeby looking guy and they didn't want to make it too too ridiculous <laughs> yeah a tall plain looking girl yeah I mean yeah. she's she's fine but I that that's the not that she's a weak link but she's probably the weakest casting I would say out of the main cr- the main group. Wow, what do you think Neil? She's okay. She was in uh Hellraiser 3, I believe. And uh I think she was the lead of Hellraiser 3, if I'm oh, right. Oh wow. And and wasn't she in one of the Star Trek series? Really? Let me look that up just to be no sure, idea. but I'm pretty sure let me look her up just to be safe there. <laughs> Yeah, she was in she was in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and she was in Hellraiser Three, Hell on Earth. She was the lead in Hellraiser Three. What? Wow. Yeah, I think like like Chris said, she was just a background to make yeah. him kind of like you know that's the type of girl that a nerdy guy would get. R- right. She, he's not going to get the super. He's not going to get the J Lo. So, so you couldn't <laughs> have someone like that. You have to have a little more down to earth kind of chick, and that's where she comes yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's the, the normal girl. That probably worked better that way. Right. Because she's not ugly. Yeah, you know, she's a good-looking woman. She's just not a, you know, supermodel type. But but at the same time, would <laughs> um, Johnny Lawrence's character, Johnny Lawrence, William Zabka's character, <laughs> I, he's Johnny Lawrence to me, I can't help it. Would William Zabka's character be going for her, or would he be going for, like, the really fucking hot chicks at that school? You know, is a jealousy. The jealousy drove him to try to keep the other two apart. Right, maybe. So, uh, what do you guys think of when Ronnie Dangerfield comes in? And you know, it's funny. The the premise is like that he's he he wants Jason to stay in college, and he goes, "Yeah, you don't have to do any of the work." He goes, "Fine, I'll do it with you." And he goes, "What?" He goes, "Yeah, I'm going back to school." So he does this, and he has absolutely no intention of actually taking any of this seriously. Like, what is the point of any of this? It's funny, because, like, he's hiring a team of people to do his homework and write his reports. He is spending all his money turning dorm 404, 406, and 408 into one big room. (laughs) What about that scene when they walked in there? Is that not the most envious moment of your life? You're just like... Wow. Well, I I never lived in a college dorm, so I don't have that experience. But I can only imagine. Yeah, because when they walk in, I mean, that place is just fucking baller, dude. Yeah, it's mind-blowing. You could get chicks just from doing that. And it's funny. You think that they don't spend too much time in there and really, like, um, get out of it what they put into it. But I guess all those scenes of, like, him doing all the studying when he was, like, half asleep or whatever, and then the team of people doing his homework, that was in that dorm and stuff like, you know? And, like... But, no, they really don't show a lot of stuff inside that dorm once that initial shot is established. Right. And the hot tub scene when he's when he's snorkeling in a hot tub with the three girls. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then that girl Diane walks in on him. Now, how about that? Now, is she a better cast for his girlfriend than Valerie was for... Uh, yeah, I think so. She's, I mean, for an older lady, I thought she was really pretty. Um, and she brings the sophistication to to that, right? Like something he, he needs, really. Right, like they, she balances him out. Right, right. So she was in the original MASH movie, not the TV show, but she was in the MASH movie from like 1970, I believe, when it came out. Right. Which I saw that when I was a kid, but I don't think I knew her from anything else. Um, when I watch this movie, but I really like her in this. I like her voice. I like the way she talks. I like her look. She's got, I don't know if you notice this when she smiles, it's almost like Jack Nicholson in the Joker. Like her smile goes like, it's almost like, like a Cheshire cat. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think she's actually really attractive for an older lady. Hmm. So this being a product of the 80s, it has so many things that you'll never see again. <laughs> or so many words, let's just say. So, like, Rodney Dangerfield's in class, and then they're talking about business, and he goes, Oh, 
tape recorders that Japs will kill us in the labor costs. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then when he's, he wants a beer at his party, he goes, hey, Pedro, where can I find a beer? Like, is this guy's name really Pedro? <laughs> It was right. just a joke, and then and then Sam Kinison's like, "We're gonna get to push those rice eaters back to the blah blah," blah. and he's like screaming oh. about that. And then like when he walks down the campus in a robe, he's like, "Oh, I never change in front of guys." First you're doing that, the next thing you know, you're I don't know what he said, like you're doing something yeah. with them. <laughs> and it's it's just the times, man. That's how it was back then. It's so funny, dude. You'll never see that again. No. The Japs will kill us. <laughs> the Japs will kill us. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my god, man. Yeah. So about Ronnie, um, Sam Kennison. What do you think of his scene? What? Is, what is with? What's going on with his hair? Is it like pinned back? Is there bobby pins? It's, <laughs> it's. I can't tell if it's like if he's got like product in it and it's just like greasing it down or what. I think it's bobby but, pins. Okay. It, regardless. His scene, scenes, those two scenes, are fucking incredible, dude. His yeah. anger and rage, which obviously is what he was known for in his act, but holy shit. Talk about someone who steals a movie only being in it for like two minutes. Oh my god. Right. Are you a fan of his, Neil? Like, besides this oh, yeah. movie? Yeah. I saw him in concert with uh, with Pauly Shore, believe it or not. Oh Pauly, my god. Pauly Shore's first concert with it and he was on tour with Sam. It was fucking awesome. When was that? Like 87, 88? Yeah, it was uh, in the middle of the 80s. This, uh, this movie this movie itself, Sam was just coming up and uh, yeah. Rodney loved him. So that's why Rodney put him in the movie. And yeah, the concert was great. In the middle of it, he called he, he called some girl that dumped their boyfriend. Like the guy picked the guy from the crowd. Now, I don't know if it was a plant or not, but it looked like it was legit. And he called her up, and he put it over the speakers, and everybody was being real quiet. And he's talking to her, and he's like, "Do you know so and so?" And she's like, "Yeah." And then he goes, and then he does his Sam stuff. Well, he says you're acting con. Da, 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 da. <laughs> he starts screaming over the phone, and the whole theater starts laughing. Oh, it was great. I feel like I've so seen I've, that. I've seen I've seen footage of that on YouTube. So either so either I saw that exact clip from the show you were at, or he must have done it probably yeah. at all of his shows. It might, it might have been his thing that no, he did. That, that was a great bit, yeah. Yeah, it was an amazing, amazing show. And Pauly Shore was really good. This was when he first started coming up before he got into the MTV and all that stuff. So yeah, it was good. Yeah, Sam was good even in, if you guys saw that Married with Children episode where he was Al's yeah. guardian angel. Oh, I, yeah, I'd never seen it until this past December when you told me about it and I watched it. Dude, he was incredible on that show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was good. Um, yeah, him and Rodney, in a weird way, they do go together. Because it's weird, because Rodney's comedy is so, like, kind of eye-rolly and clean. And Sam is the opposite. And he, he doesn't do, like, the, hey, so she told me to, you know, go play someplace new. I said, try the kitchen, you know. It's, like, nothing like that kind of a joke. Yeah, isn't that weird? Rodney, I never thought about that. Rodney doesn't really cuss. He doesn't say any curse words. No. Not really. But somehow in my brain, he's like a quote unquote filthy comic, but he's not. <laughs> no. 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 Wow. No. How did how did Ronnie Dangerfield, how was his character able, he seems so important. He's at this big board meeting. He's at the head of the table. The guy's like, yeah, hey, we have a lot of agendas to go over. He goes, my son's on the phone. How is he able to just say, okay, I'm going to go ahead to college for how long? <laughs> like you have nothing to, nothing's keeping you there. Like what is going on here? He could hardly get out of one meeting, and yet he could just abandon this company he runs. <laughs> the big and tall, or fat man. I know it's something, like, more insulting than just big and tall, right? Isn't it like, um... Big, no, it's called fat. tall and fat. Tall and fat, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> stupid, but it's great. Oh, it's great. <laughs> Call me sometime when you have no class. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. Again, just sh that's a perfect example. That's a throwaway line. But it's hilarious. Call me sometime when you have no class. Because <laughs> she was a teacher, so you knew what he meant. But still, it's got that other meaning. It's oh, great. Oh, it's great. And she t I love how she takes everything. And it's funny. If you really observe, like, his whole interactions with this woman, it's there's no depth to any of this. It's all just one-liners. Like, if you really pay attention to anything they talk about, like, he had, like, one line that wasn't a one-liner while they were having dinner. He's like... Yeah, women. I don't know. I just, I just can't seem to whatever, whatever. And then that's it. Then it's all joke, 
joke, right, joke, right. joke. It's like it's like it's like eighty percent of his dialogue in this movie are just jokes, like literally. Well, that's why she fell in love with him because she was with that stuffy yeah, other shit, it, it, he and, and he made her laugh. Yeah, yeah. He, he was the polar opposite of that fucking stick in the mud British guy. I just wonder what joke got her in bed with him, like because there's, there's nothing <laughs> else, right? <laughs> Oh my God! Well, the rumor is Rodney was uh, well uh, endowed. Well, oh really? That's, that's, that's the rumor. That's the rumor. I did, did not know that. Nice. Don't really want to think about that. Do you think his penis made it past his belly if he laid flat out of bed? <laughs> <laughs> was it as tall? Big and fat. <laughs> yeah, how about Paulie ending up with those two chicks at the bar, though? Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Like, do these girls look at these two? Why are those girls sitting with 65-year-old men? Like, I know Paulie was a little younger, but Jesus Christ. You're on a college campus at a, and, and a college bar, which is weird. Because I, I know there's always co- bars in these college movies, but technically none of these kids are able to drink, right? They graduate when they're 21. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah. So Back then, the drinking age was probably lower, right? Well, it depends on the state, but I even then though, it, even back then, I think most you know places back then was twenty one for drinking age. Yeah, I but, thought so. Um, yeah, no, that that scene with when they're at the bar, when Polly and you know uh, Robert Downey, the jocks, they're getting in a little fight. Roddy's and Roddy gets in, and he's like, Polly walks over. He's like, "Got a problem? No, I got a problem. Now you do." Oh, that's man. that's just amazing. It, oh, I forgot to mention he grabs that napkin holder and just fucking crushes it. <laughs> like, oh, oh, that's so great, dude. That's almost like uh, Frank Duke smashing the bottom brick, you know, crushing that napkin holder. That's almost as intimidating as that. <laughs> <laughs> oh Frank, my god! Frank Dukes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that whole fight that they had when the football players were looking for Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, that, and that everyone's just like leaping over the counters and everything. Amazing. I only wish that when they went back to school the next day, they did seem a little whatever. But I wish they all had like bandages and blacks and blues everywhere. Like that would have been a better touch. But they kind of skimped out in that regard. Yeah, that that doesn't happen in movies, unfortunately. Yeah, but I think like sh- shortly after is when Marge Sweetwater comes in and she's a stenographer and she's taking all his notes. Like, here's the thing: like, is Rodney Dangerfield really going to read these notes? Is he going to go over the stenography papers and like really take this in? Like, if you can't show up to the class, no, don't bother. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? And he's already got people writing his papers and taking his tests. Why does he need someone taking notes? Other, other than just some comedy thrown in. It's just comedy, and I love how his son was laughing his ass off while she was getting yelled at. I'm Marge Sweetwater. The name is would make me laugh. Mar- oh, the name's perfect. Marge Sweetwater? <laughs> I'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> and she's obviously Alex in Planes, Trains, Automobiles, and uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, I thought somebody was going to go, I want a fucking car right fucking now. Fuck you. That's all I could think of when when you see her in any movie. <laughs> that and also with the secretary in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I think she's yeah. incredible in that role. He's a righteous dude. <laughs> You're a big fan of playing strange, right, Neil? I've never seen it. <laughs> oh, look at the face. Hey, Alex, <laughs> cut, his, cut his feed. Cut his feed right now. <laughs> oh, my God. I know everybody's got blind spots, but holy shit. Wow. You look blown away. You, you have to watch that movie, sir. I think it is incredible. I think it's my favorite comedy of all time. It's in my top five for sure. Wow. I guess I got to watch it then. No, it's it's Alex and I did a review on it back in November. It is the perfect blending of a comedy with some real heartfelt drama thrown in. It is perfect, dude. 
Um, <clears throat> so we get to this big, uh, this big party scene. I guess there's three big moments coming up. So the big party, then you got the the big test of him taking all the verbal tests, and then the ending is the big diving thing. So this big party, um, you get a shit faced melon who's just walking up to people, kissing their girlfriends, throwing beer in their face, like. Wow, all that because he blew the swim meet because um, the Karate Kid dude told him that his dad bought his way on the team, so he probably bought the judges, so that messed with his head, so he 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 blew that. Then, so you have this big party at Melons, the cops are bringing the beers, um, this girl brings that fuddy-duddy, oh no, he does, does he go in there? No, he waits in the car, the fuddy dud. He doesn't go inside, no. So she goes in and then sees him snorkeling with these three hot college girls. <laughs> What's funny about that is, that's a great moment, but that went nowhere. Like, well, no, there was no repercussions from that, no. No, one time she goes, I can understand that you're regressed, blah, 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 but that's not why I gave you a failing grade or whatever. And then from there, she's she's seemingly okay with him again because she congratulates him for the diving thing or whatever, and then everything's fine as if nothing really happened. You know what's even more disturbing about that scene when he comes up from being under the water? He says, Diane, say hello to my nieces. As if that would make it any fucking better. If he was snorkeling in a hot tub with his nieces. <laughs> yeah, that just means I'm not going to dump you. I'm going to call the police, too. <laughs> so disturbing. Um, yeah. So at this party, we have Danny Elfman and Oingo Boingo. And what song are they performing live? Dead Man's Party. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So that is obviously our namesake for this non-horror podcast we have here. Um, it just it just seemed like the perfect... We wanted to blend... We wanted a touch of a horror name in it, but not really. Dead Man's Party is the perfect way to do it because... And Chris came up with it, right? Like, I didn't even come up with that name. You... Yeah, I don't. I don't even know why. When you said we need to think about names, that I was just trying to scour my brain for movies that we might review. I know why. Be, because I said I, I'd like to blend a song with the name and eighties. You said you said I'd like to somehow t somehow loosely tie it into the Skeleton Crew, and that song just popped in my head, and I was like, okay, so that song title kind of sounds, you know. It's quote unquote horror related, even though it's not. Right. But it's it's strictly from the eighties, so I thought well, that would be perfect. Right. Like if someone didn't know we kind of came from a horror podcast, they wouldn't think anything of it if it was just Dead Man's Party. Like Neil, we were gonna do Bad to the Bone because remember when <laughs> Arnold comes out to Terminator Two like that, he's getting his clothes from the guys in the bar. And then he walks on over to his bike. So we're going to do that and Bone Skeleton Crew. So that was going to be our name. And then when, when Chris gave me a list of names and I saw that one, I was like, wow, and now we have an intro song. Yeah, and it's not a long song either. Bad to the Bone's a long song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I would have edited it either way. That's what I do. He's the editor. I'm the editor. <laughs> Uh, now we get the study montage of him studying ridiculously. There's a part where, like, the kid's holding the book for him when he's showering with a coffee in his hand and he's, like, falling over. That was so ridiculous. As if the book wouldn't get fucking soaked. That's because like, what, uh, what Mr. Stuffy accused him of cheating. <sighs> yeah, they all figured out that. He's trying he to kick him out. Yeah, he has a team of people doing all his work for him, and they and they could all tell. They all said, you didn't write this. And even he hires Kurt Vonnegut to do a report on Kurt Vonnegut, and then he goes, whoever wrote this knows nothing about Kurt Vonnegut. And he goes, <laughs> fuck me, fuck you. <laughs> if, if this movie was not in existence, I would have no fucking idea who Kurt Vonnegut was. I have I've never heard of him before this movie or since, but apparently he was a very famous author. Yeah, and it was really him in the in the movie. Right, which which is great. I mean, it, it'd be even better. You know, and that'd be like in a horror movie if someone said, you know, if they brought Stephen King in. Right. If Stephen King had written a paper for someone and then Stephen King showed up, I guess that's like the equivalent of that. But, I mean, it still works, even though I don't know who the guy is. Yeah. 
and uh, where I was going with the Diane thing, yeah, after after um, she yells at him for being regressed and everything else, the next thing, the ne- in the montage of him studying, you see her holding him and he's reading the book from behind her head. Like, I thought you're mad. It's as if nothing happened. Yeah, that's what I said earlier. There's no repercussions at all from when she walked in and he was in the hot tub with those chicks. His nieces. So what did you guys think when Melon knocked Johnny uh, Lawrence the fuck out? When he goes, oh, we we just get out of here, you, you, whatever, whatever. And then he, he like, damn. He goes, what do I got to do? Knock your teeth down your throat? <laughs> Careful, Melon, your dad's not here to bail you out this time. Ah. And then he just smokes him. (laughs) He grew a pair of balls. But did you think that they should have an homage to Karate Kid and have Johnny Lawrence do something in in defense or offense? Should have done the crane. (laughs) (laughs) Johnny Lawrence with the crane. Oh, Oh, I'm glad you said that. Speaking of when you said homage, that just reminded me. So in the opening credits of this movie, when it's just when it shows, you know, Thornton as a kid back when he was growing up with his dad and then it shows the credits and they're just showing all these old photos as the credits play they show a quick photo of Rodney from Caddyshack oh wow did you catch that Mm -mm. yeah it's like one of the the final pictures they show before it kicks into that commercial yeah I never really noticed that till last night they use an actual picture of him from Caddyshack wow yeah and then what about the scene where um, Paulie's outside with by the limousine and he holds up that Bruce Springsteen sign? That's <laughs> genius. Young young people today, if they were to watch this movie, which g- give me a break, young people growing up today are not watching this movie. But what would be what would be the equivalent yeah. today? Like someone holding up like a fucking Taylor Swift. Oh, Taylor sign? Swift. Oh, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's just funny that there there are a lot of people out there right now that would watch this movie and be like, who the fuck is Bruce Springsteen when he's holding up that card? They wouldn't know. Dude, you could have said this 20 years ago and they wouldn't exactly. know. Exactly. I mean, not that he's not still a great performer and everything. I'm not into him, but 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 he, you know, he he and all those other performers from that time, even though they're still going strong or at least a lot of them, they're not commercially relevant anymore. Yeah, but you know what? That's nothing. Let's be honest. They wouldn't know who Sam Kennison is. They wouldn't know who anybody, who, any guest person, right. Marge Sweetwater. They wouldn't know any of these people. They hardly know Rodney. They say, who's this guy? Well, he's the star of this movie. Oh, okay. Oh, he was in Ladybugs. <laughs> Ladybugs. <laughs> so that's the thing. I don't. Nobody here is, is relevant in any way. That's just time. That's just life. Yeah. It, it's hardly on Springsteen on that side. I mean, this, you could go down the, they wouldn't know who, oh, maybe Rocky transcends time. You would almost imagine everybody would know Paulie from Rocky, right? I guess, or am I being just crazy? So I, I work with a lot of younger people at my job, and I've talked to people over the years, let's say over the last 10 years, and got on the topic of Rocky. And I'm like, you know, you know Rocky, right? And they're like, I mean, I've heard of it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, I, this conversation's over right now. That's most of what I get at work, too. Yeah? Like, we're just the weird people who have been holding on to these things for, like, 40 no, years? we're just old. No, we, exactly. We like what we like. Exactly. We're just old. I mean, when I, when I was in my early 20s, if, when I was in my early 20s, people, if they would ask me, like, you know James Dean, right? I'd be like, I mean, I've heard of him, but... No, not really. See, I was obsessed with Dean when I was like 14 to 24. I have all his movies on Blu-ray. Really? Oh, yeah. He's great. I've never seen one second of any movie he's ever been. Have you not seen the faces of Alex? There's like a... He posted a picture of all the different hairstyles through the years. There's one you can tell he was in his James Dean face. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> obvious. The one with the white shirt and the black leather jacket. Sons of Anarchy stage. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Everything I'm into, you can see it. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. So why is Valerie Desmond so much taller than Jason? Like, why not fake it with him and have him stand on a block or something every scene that he's with her? Yeah, that was a weird casting choice because you never... I don't know if I could name one other movie in history that I've seen as far as like a a relationship where the girl was taller than the guy. Well, I guess my cousin Vinny would be one. (laughs) It's so odd looking at it. It is. (laughs) 
So how about when when Chaz? That's what Johnny Lawrence's real name is in the movie. When he sees Valerie and this dude kiss. Like, what must he be thinking? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, how is this happening? Did you build her with power tools? Like, how are you kissing Valerie? So how about when Robert Downey Jr. distracts the divers on the other team by honking the horn or putting the mirror of the sun in their eyes? The big, I love the bigger. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> That's oh great. my God. That is amazing. So do you guys think that Chaz's character, did he blow the the dive on purpose because he was mad that Jason and Valerie were together? And how about when he goes, oh, were you interested in Valerie Desmond? Well, she's taken or something. How crazy was that? And then he was like, coming into your own, hey, Melon? Little, something little fleeb. <laughs> So do you think he blew that on purpose and then all of a sudden he's cramping up? Was that cramp a lie too? I can never get a read on that. Oh, the the cramp was totally yeah. fake because he's going up the ladder and then it shows his face and he's like looking around and right. it's like the, it pops in his head. He's like, ow! So yeah, he was just trying to fuck the whole team because he was mad that he didn't get the girl, basically. But yep. what would that accomplish? Doesn't he want to have a... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't understand that. Like, what What would have happened? Somebody else would have dove. So what? Like, I don't, I don't even understand that. But then, of course, it leads to us pulling out the 65-year-old man and <laughs> Ronnie Dangerfield doing the triple Lindy. The best scene. <laughs> oh, my God. So let's just talk about the triple Lindy, Lindy for a half hour. Well, the, in, at the, in the beginning of this movie, when Ronnie's at his own swimming pool, when he's outside with Polly after yeah. him and his wife split up, he does that flip into the pool, not even off a diving board, just off the straight up concrete, does that flip. So that's kind of like a foreshadowing moment to like, oh, this guy knows how to dive. And then obviously at the end, you get to the triple Lindy, which is beyond ridiculous, but it's still amazing. <laughs> yeah, the triple Lindy. Uh, yeah, pretty amazing. He dives off of multiple diving boards, does flips. And they, they, were, they were able to install extra diving boards in the fucking blink of an eye, yes. In the time he was walking up the ladder, they said, we have to install a board. Yes. And the only time he took was to test the wind and jump right off. Like, <laughs> wait, yeah. do you guys say we'll be back in a half an hour? Nothing. And the faces he makes as he's flipping through the air <laughs> just cracks me up every time. It's like, oh, Whoa. yeah. Whoa. <laughs> so dumb. The best. So, so, I mean, obviously it's not him doing the dive, but there, there's the one part where... It's after he jumps off the second diving board and he's holding onto his knees and he's kind of like <laughs> somersaulting in the air. Whoever that stuntman was, they had him made up really, really well. He looked almost identical because I had it on slow motion last night and he looks almost identical to Rodney, man. No, they did good. They made yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It was believable on some level. Yeah. So, yeah, that was back to school. That This has been a favorite of mine for years. I always bought it whenever I if upgrading or whatever. I don't think I'll go 4K with it, but um, I'm good now with the Blu-ray. But, yeah, such a great movie, such a great ensemble. So many people, so many legends in one movie, so many jokes. And all the jokes still play. Like, it, I've never got to a point in my life where I, I – I mean, maybe some of them aren't – insanely funny but I never got to a point in my life where I watched this and didn't find a charm or a smirk at least in every single one of these jokes you know <clears throat> all the performances top notch perfect band to play at that party perfect song for that movie and this podcast <laughs> um, just just great stuff uh, so how do you guys rate back to school out of five how many how many napkin holders are we crushing out of five for this one, Neil? <laughs> oh, Jesus. This movie's great. And I now that we've talked about it, I have to rewatch it because it's been a few. But yeah, I would probably give it a five out of five. It's fucking hilarious. It's really good. It holds up well. Yep, yep. How about you, Chris? Oh, it's it's easy five out of five for me. Like if I, if I were to make a list of my top 10 80s comedies, this would probably be in the top five. Um, it's just, it's not, even though some of the references are dated, like the whole Bruce Springsteen thing and all that stuff, not dated to me because I lived through that time. But hmm. it's just, 
it never gets old. It's hilarious every single time I watch it. It's perfect. Yeah, I had such a great time watching it for this show. I actually want to watch it again because I felt like taking notes was a disservice to my viewing. So it was that good. Um, <clears throat> I always have a great time. I, I'll watch it the rest of my life. Uh, I'm so glad I discovered it when I did, and it's always been a part of my life. And always five out of five, love it. Definitely top five 80s comedy of all time for me. So <clears throat> that's back to school. Uh, Neil, thanks for hopping on, man. Yeah, no worries, man. It was great. Yeah, the ghoul couldn't uh, make it tonight, but we really wanted to get this done during the time people are going back to school. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, yeah, man, you're a lifesaver. And, uh, Chris, what are we doing with the ghoul next week? Uh, Oh, I know. um, I think Kickboxer. Yeah, Kickboxer. Van Dam. See you next week.